Here we have a big list of data. Now, when I talk about a list, it has to be formatted in a certain way. So I want you to notice that uh, row one has your field names. Now, it doesn't have to be row one specifically. It just has to be the first row of your data that has your field names. If it's not row one, then there should be at least one blank row before the headers so that it'll recognize where the headers are. But usually I do put it in row one. Uh, no, and now we're going to scroll down. And when we scroll down, you're going to see that it's one continuous block of data all the way down. There's no blank rows until the very bottom. Now, this could be thousands and thousands of rows, but you just want that to be continuous with no blank rows until the very bottom. Well, right away, I want to show you one that people use for these large uh, lists of data, something that's called freeze panes. Notice when I scroll down, I lose my headers up there, right? So I want to make sure the headers always stay up on the screen. So in this case, I'm going to pick on cell A2. I'm going to pick, uh, actually, I'm going to pick on cell B2. And uh, it's going to be called freeze panes. Now, when we freeze the panes, everything above that cell will be frozen and everything to the left of the current cell will be frozen. So watch my screen. I'll pick on a view and then freeze panes and then freeze panes again. Now, it's very subtle, but you'll see a line between row one and row two, and you'll see a line between column A and column B. Now, if I scroll down, notice how row one stays on the screen because I froze it on the screen. No matter how far I go down, row one is going to be uh, on there. Now, let's scroll back up to the top. Now, I'm going to scroll to the right. Notice when I scroll to the right, column A stays on the screen because that's also frozen. So you're going to use that for a large list of data. The freeze panes is very helpful. Now, if you saved your workbook right now, the freeze panes would be there the next time as well. And that's what many people do. They set that up and they save it for the next time. If you want to remove the freeze panes, I'll pick on the freeze panes and then unfreeze panes. And it goes back to normal. Let's try that again. I picked on cell B2 before I did the freeze panes because now everything above the current cell will be frozen which is basically row one, and everything to the left of the current cell will be frozen, which is column A. And that's why I chose B2. Now I'll pick on freeze panes, and then freeze panes again. And now notice if I scroll down, row one stays on the screen. Okay, now the next thing that we can do with this kind of data is we like to sort it. Uh, sorting has become much easier than it used to be. It used to be that you have to select all of your data. Now you just have to pick one cell. So for example, I like to sort by the expense type. So you pick on one cell in the expense type column like that. Now I'll pick in the data menu up top, data. And I'm gonna come over here. Sometimes during this session, I'll make my mouse do that so that you can see where my mouse is. The A to Z is gonna sort ascending uh, in alphabetical order and the Z to A means we're going to sort in reverse alphabetical order. We call that descending. I'm going to pick on the A to Z. And just like that, all the breakfast items are together and all the dinners are together and so on. So it's really that easy to sort. Let's try that again. I like to sort by country. I'm going to pick on one cell in the country column. Doesn't matter which one. And I'll pick on the A to Z. And just like that, all the Austrias are together. All the Czechs are together and so on. So it's really that easy to sort. You just pick one cell in the column that you want to sort, and you pick on the A to Z or the Z to A. Now here's the mistake that some, uh, some, uh, sometimes people will make, and this is what you want to try to avoid. This time I'm going to highlight the entire column E. Now this time column E is going to sort, but nothing is going to come with it. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on uh, the A to Z right there. Notice how it's trying to give me a message. It says, Microsoft Excel found data next to your selection. Since you have not selected this data, it will not be sorted. It's trying to tell me something's wrong. Nonetheless, I'll pick on continue. Now, when I pick on sort here, keep an eye on column E and keep an eye on column F. I'll pick in the word sort. Notice how column E shifted, but column F didn't move. So now everything has the wrong amount. So that was what not to do. Let's go ahead and undo that. Of course, undo is up here at the top. I'll pick on undo. Now here's the proper way to sort. 
I'll just pick one cell in column E. Don't pick the whole column, just pick one cell in the column that you want to sort. Then I'll pick on the A to Z. Now notice how the whole thing came with it, right? So uh, hopefully you saw the difference there. The proper way to sort is to uh, click one cell in the column that you want to sort and then pick on A to Z or Z to A. Sometimes you want to sort by more than one column. Let's try something like that. In this case, I'm going to pick on one cell that's not blank within that data. Then I'll pick on the word sort up here, right there. And then you have this extra window. From the extra window, that's where I can do more than one field. So I'll pick on the word add level. And you can do that as many times as you wanted to. You can go beyond three now. In fact, I'll go up to four fields. Uh, so you really can go beyond three, which is really helpful. That used to be the limit, but it's not anymore. Now what you do from here is you're going to pick on the pull down uh, for each different row. So first I'll pick on country, then by expense type, then by date, and then by US dollar amount. Now you can have as many as you wanted to there. In this case, it's going to sort first by country. Then when the country is the same, it'll sort by expense type within country, and then by date, and then by US dollar amount. It's going to sort top down. Uh, now you can have as many there as you wanted to. What it doesn't like, it wouldn't like if you left one blank. I'm going to pick on add level. And notice how we have a blank. If you have any blanks, you want to delete those. So I'll pick on uh, that blank row. And I'll pick on the word delete level. And that goes away. Now follow my mouse over here to the right. And we'll click on these pull downs. And now you can see each field can be sorted independently ascending or descending. So you have a lot of flexibility here. Now here's a really important choice. I'm going to uncheck it where it says my data. I'm, I'm going to make sure it is checked where it says my data has headers. Because as you can see over here, we do have the headers of the field names. When you have that, you want to make sure that that is checked right there. Because if you uncheck that, then that first row gets sorted into your data and then you lose your header. So it's fairly important. I'll click on OK. Let's see if it worked. Notice how I put all of the Austrias together. Then within Austria, put all of the incidentals together. Then with the incidental, it did it by the date. I see two for the 23rd. And then for the 23rd, it did it by the amount, as you can see. So it really did work. If you want to sort by one column, you'll pick on one cell in the column that you want to sort. And you pick on A to Z or Z to A. If you want to sort by more than one column, you pick on one cell that's not blank, and then you pick on the word sort right there. Then you get this extra window from which you can do multiple fields. And that should be all you have to know about sorting your information. I'm going to click on OK. Now, the next thing I'd like to show you with this data is uh, how to do a filter. A filter means the following. What if you only wanted to see the dinner items only? That's a filter. What if you just wanted to see the ones that were more than $30 in this column? Or maybe we can do it by a date range. Now you're going to use the same kind of data that you used for the uh, sort. It's really important that the field names are up top and it's going to be one continuous block of data. To turn the filter on, I'll pick on one cell that's not blank and I'll pick on the word filter right there. Good. Notice how I'll turn these pull downs on at the top of the window and that really activates the filter. I'm going to click on the pull down where it says expense type. Now here's another way to sort right there. And then I can pick and choose as many as I wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck it where it says select all. And I'll pick on breakfast, dinner, and lunch. So now you can pick more than one before you were limited to one. Now you can pick as many as you wanted to. So I'll click on OK. Notice how my list got smaller because now it's only the breakfast, lunch, and dinner items. And that happened all the way down. So a filter is going to show you the exact records that you're looking for. Now the filters are always temporary. We can always get the records back. And I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. It's always temporary. Now the nice part about the filter is you can keep on going and add more criteria. Really as much as you wanted to. So I'm going to click on the pull down where it says country. And then I can pick and choose those. So I'm going to uncheck it where it says select all. And I'll pick on Austria, France, 
Germany, and so on. I'm going to click on OK. Now the list got even smaller because now they have to be from Austria, France, or Germany, and they also have to be breakfast, lunch, or dinner at the same time. So you can really use this to go to the exact records that we're looking for. This is called a filter. Now, before I continue talking about the filter, I want to show you something that's called uh, a custom view. A custom view allows you to save your filter so you can quickly recall it. Let's say this is a search that you run all the time. I'd like to have a way to save it so I can quickly recall it. I'm going to pick in the view menu up top. View. We're going to come over here and pick in the word custom view. Now on this window, you pick in the word add so you can add a new one. And you want to give it a name. I'll call it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You want to give it a good name because you could have more than one of this. So I'll type in the name and I'll click on OK. Now it didn't look like it did anything, but let me show you what it did. Now here's a way to get all the uh, records back again and turn the filter off. I'll pick in the data menu, data, and I'll pick in the word filter, and that turns it off completely and gets all the records back, as you can see. So we can always get the records back from the filter. Now, but you know, as soon as you turn that off, that's when your boss comes into your office uh, asking for those breakfast, lunch, and dinner items, right? Well, let's see how we can get it back. We'll pick in the view menu, come back to where it says custom view, and then in this, there's, uh, there's the one that we made. And that's why you want to give them a good name. You could have more than one of those. They'd be listed right there. I'll pick in the word show. And now you can see how it recalled that filter for me. So I like the custom view a lot because it's a great way to recall, uh, a great way to save and recall that filter. Let's go ahead and um, let's continue with the filter. Now let me show you another way to get all the records back again. I'll pick in the word data, and I'll pick in the word clear right there. And that gets all the records back as well, as you can see. But when I do a clear, notice how the pull downs are still there. So then I can do another um, I can do another filter. When I picked in the word filter before, it turned it off completely. But when I pick in the word clear, all the records come back, but you can see how the filter is still there. So I can do another filter. Let's see how it works with number fields. So I'm going to click on the pull down for the US dollar amount. And then I'll pick on the word number filters. From there, I can do equals, does not equal, greater than, less than, between. I'm going to say greater than. Then you get this new window, and I'll type in 30. I'd like to see everything that's more than $30. I'll click on OK. Notice now it's only going to show me the items that are more than $30. Watch that one again. This is great for number fields. I'm going to click on the pull down where it says US dollar amount. Then from there, you pick on the word number filters. Then from there, I can say equals, does not equal, greater than, less than, and these kind of things. All right. Now, let me show you a different one. It's called top 10. It's going to show you the highest 10 values. We also have above average and below average. I'm going to pick on the word top 10. Then you get this other window. Now, if I pick on this pull down, I can do the top 10 or the bottom 10. All right, so I'll pick on top. And it doesn't have to be 10. I'll make it 15. So I'm gonna, I'd like to see the top 15 items. I'm going to click on OK. Now it went through the entire list. And here's the highest 15 values. Let's see how we did that again. I'm going to click on the pull down for the US dollar amount. And I'll pick on the word number filters. From here, I can say does not equal, equal, greater than, less than, between. We can also say top 10 or above average or below average. So you have a lot of flexibility with your number fields, as we can see. Now, I'd like to get everything back again. I'm going to come up here on the data menu and pick on the word clear. And now everything is back, as you can see. Let's see how the filter works with date fields. With date fields, we can do a date range. I'm going to click on the pull down where it says date. And then I'll pick on the word date filters. Now you can see we have lots of different date ranges. Next week, next month, next year. You never had those before. That's really helpful. Here's some more. 
I bet we can all uh, I bet we can all use year to date. Now I'm going to pick where it says all dates in this period. Then you can do it by month or by quarter. So I like the fact that you have all these built-in date ranges. Now, if you want to have specific date ranges, here's how you can do that. You can say equals, that's for one specific date. I can say before a date or after a date or between two dates. All right, so notice how we can do uh, different date ranges right there. And then all these other ones are built right in. Let me show you how we got to this. We picked on the pull down for the date or for any date field. And then you pick on the word date filters and then you have all those built in date ranges. Now you can mix and match as many of those uh, criteria as you need to get to the exact records that we're looking for. And that's what we call a filter. Now here's a shortcut that you can use with your filter. Sometimes the data gets really long and you want to be able to search it. So I'm going to click on this pull down where it says expense type. And I'm going to pick where it says search. I'll type in the letter T. Now it'll only show me the ones that have the letter T inside, like breakfast, entertainment, gifts. I'll type in the letter E, and now it'll only show me the ones that have the letters T and E, like entertainment, hotel, and telephone. Okay, so when you have a